So Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, or WWDC, is going to be happening next month, and around this time last year, I made a few wish list videos talking about what I was really hoping to see in the upcoming operating systems for the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac, etc. And I made multiple videos because I had a lot of different things that I was really hoping for in each operating system. But this year, it's a little different. So we're going to pack it all into one video. And I also want to address a few of the rumors that I've seen about things that are going to be coming out at WWDC. So let's dive in. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is probably also the first thing that Apple will talk about at their keynote, which is iOS 17. And the first thing and the biggest thing that I want them to focus on, the first thing on my wish list, is just stability and performance improvements. Like, please. Don't get me wrong, iOS 16 has been fairly stable on the latest hardware, but I have also dealt with some folks who use iPhone 8s and iPhone 10s, which are currently still supported, and it definitely shows that this operating system was optimized for mid to upper range and not their older phones. So with this most likely being the last operating system that the 8 and the 10 will support, I kind of hope that they will at least roll it into this operating system so that those phones can age out on a stable operating system and not just be super buggy. Again, iOS 16 is fairly stable and has a lot of really good features, but the big feature push with iOS 16 seems to be what kind of introduced some extra bugs that haven't quite been squashed yet. So first thing on my wish list for iOS 17 is just stability and performance, please. The next thing on my wish list is Control Center. I would love to see Apple clean up Control Center because it has become very cumbersome in a lot of ways. Like I use Control Center on a daily basis to control things like my HomeKit setup, turn on the flashlight, or even add a quick note with the quick notes button. So while it's really nice and was introduced in a way that made it seem super useful, especially with its implementation up in the top corner for the newer iPhones, it has become rather cluttered as more and more features have been added. So having some sort of refreshed interface that makes it a little more navigable would be very nice. And really the only other thing that I would love to see improved upon in iOS 17 is the dynamic island functionality. And I know that that is only for the 14 Pro and Pro Max models, but it is something that actually kind of pushed me to go with a Pro model again this year instead of just going with a 14 Plus because it was shown as a very capable sort of addition to the software functionality of the phone. It was a super clever way of integrating a camera cutout while still making it functional in the OS. And then we didn't really get a whole lot. I mean, do something with it. You got enough space up there, put Siri up there or something. Just make it more useful than just music controls and navigation. I don't know. Siri is the best thing I could think of for the space that was there. Maybe the inability to think of other things to do with it is why Apple hasn't added much to it, but either way, just some improvements there. All right, now moving on from iOS 17, we're gonna shift gears to iPadOS 17, and this wish list for me has a few bigger things on it. The first of which is just make Stage Manager more useful and more integral to the iPad experience when you do something like connect a keyboard, please. Like I was super excited when they introduced Stage Manager and full multi-screen support with the iPad because I thought it would be our first opportunity to have a windowed operating system on the iPad. And then as I started using it more, I realized that it really was just sort of iPad windows floating around in a less convenient way than just split screening it with the already really good touch implementation. So I think I stopped using Stage Manager about four months into its introduction. And really I haven't used it since, which is unfortunate because I would love to have an operating system that took proper advantage of Windows while not having to be stuck with a mouse and keyboard option if I wanted to go and use the touch implementation. It's a very Microsoft Surface dilemma, but I feel like if anybody could pull off the touch interface being really good to use while also having a windowed operating system with the mouse and keyboard, I think Apple could do it since they have a touch first OS that they're grafting a mouse and keyboard setup on instead of grafting a touch interface onto a almost 30 year old operating system. Looking at you windows. But just give us proper Windows support. Don't make the windows have to snap to places that are convenient for you. Let us just drag them to wherever we want, let them resize to whatever size we want to make them. And maybe, just maybe, 
let us load macOS on these. That's the far-fetched thing, but like, you've already moved Logic and Final Cut to the iPad. Maybe just move the whole op operating system from the Mac. I don't know, just something, but maybe just Windows support would be you know, appreciated and not in the implementation you currently have it in. Either way, moving on to the next thing on my list, it is also kind of computer-based on the iPad, which is just fix the file system. I've said this for a long time, but the Finder in macOS is what I'm used to. I can muddle my way through File Explorer with Windows. I can fly through the Finder in macOS, and Files is neither of those in the iPad. It is just terrible. And one of the worst things is that when they finally introduced the ability to plug in external drives, they didn't give you the option to actually format the drive. So if you plugged a drive in and it wasn't recognized or it was recognized but not compatible, you couldn't fix that. You just had to say, all right, let me go plug it into some other device that lets me format it so I can plug it into this again so that it can be used. Fix the file system, just literally, you again, moved Logic and Final Cut to the iPad, move Finder to the iPad, and then give us the option to format our disks. Shouldn't be that hard, but apparently it is. Sorry, I just get a little heated when I talk about the iPad Pro because there's just so much potential here with the M1 chip and this gorgeous display and Apple has only just started utilizing it when they ported over the Final Cut and Logic Pro apps, which I did a video on, you can check it out over there, but yeah, I just get heated because these, these things are beasts on chains and Apple's chains are their poor implementation of the OS for the Pro model iPads, which is why my wish list is mostly things that are just letting us do what we expect to do on an M1 powered Apple device. Speaking of which, the last thing on my list is a proper clamshell mode. I ran my entire YouTube channel for years on a laptop in clamshell mode where it would just close up, it would see the mouse and keyboard connected over Bluetooth, it would see both my displays, and it would just sit there quietly with its screen off doing what I asked of it. It'd be super great if you could do that with the iPad because I don't always wanna have to use the iPad screen when I have it connected to a bigger, and in some cases, better screen, like an OLED television. So maybe, maybe, let us connect a mouse and keyboard over Bluetooth, because you already support it. Let us plug in a display with one of the multitude of USB-C to HDMI, or even Thunderbolt hubs. Let us close the iPad and keep on using it with the display that is actively being used instead of the smaller one. Just a thought, clamshell mode please. And that's it for iPad OS. I just want it to be more like a computer as I have for quite some time now, because while it is nice to have the option to use it like an iPad, it would also be super nice to use it like a computer. Give us those options, because if a pro user is buying a pro iPad, they're probably buying it because they're going to use it like a professional would with any other piece of professional equipment, and not like grandma buying a $350 base model iPad separate them. You've already done so much to do that. Separate them, give us these features, pretty please. Next wish list, watch OS. This is gonna be the 10th one and I have a few things. Again, not a whole lot because, well, I'm not expecting a lot, but let's dive in. Very first thing on the wish list and the biggest one for me, make better use of all three of these different screen sizes. Just like I said with the iPad, it's okay to separate one product category by their capabilities. Not everybody is gonna buy an Apple Watch Ultra, but the people who do really want to take better advantage of that bigger 49 millimeter display. So maybe instead of just scaling the OS up to this bigger screen, maybe make it use the screen a little better and don't just maybe scale it a little bit, but keep everything more or less the same. On the flip side, not everybody is gonna to wanna to use a 40 millimeter Apple Watch like an Ultra. So you can forego a few of the bigger screen features on that for the people who just want a basic watch experience to get notifications and health updates. Use the screens better. You got three different sizes now. The one in the middle might be a little difficult, but hey, half of here, half of here, you put it in the middle, you might have you know a good scaled experience for all three, who knows, but just, do something so that as a big watch screen user, I can take full advantage of mine. And then when my mom uses her 40 millimeter for basic things like fitness tracking and notifications, she doesn't have to worry about trying to use this tiny ass little keyboard that you thought was a good idea to scale down to a tiny watch face. Just a thought. 
Next up is better support for widgets and complications. Now, there are actually some pretty good widgets and complications available already on the Apple Watch, but with the design that Apple tries to stick to with all of their Apple Watches, it can be a little confusing when you go to add a weather widget and it looks exactly like Apple's built-in weather widget until you click on it. Maybe allow for a bit more customization and it kind of ties into the third thing on my list, which we'll talk about in a minute, but Overall, I would like to see some better complications, even just directly from Apple, some better complications. And ideally, a better way to actually change the complications. I'm okay with holding and dragging a complication around on the watch face. It doesn't always have to be this hold and then scroll and then all these different ways of interacting with the watch face. Just let me drag one from one point to another and then just have the one that I moved it to pop to the top. Like if I wanted to move weather, over to timer, I can just drag it and timer moves up to where weather was, something like that. And this would also be possibly enabled by giving us custom watch faces. Make the face kit SDK, just let us make our own watch faces, please. Can you imagine how booming of an app market you could make if one of the markets in that app store, which already exists, you have an app store for the Apple Watch, Imagine how much more that actual app store would boom if you let us get custom watch faces. You can control it as much as you want in terms of, you know, it has to fit in with these parameters because people have done that for years and have still made incredibly creative things within your tight parameters of development. So why not just do it again, but this time with watch faces? Like, please give us some watch faces. It's probably not going to happen this year. I haven't seen anything saying it will, so it probably won't, but it's, you know, it'd be nice to have. And that is everything for watchOS. Again, not a whole lot. There hasn't been a whole lot that I've been looking forward to with the new operating systems this year. And the same goes for what we're going to talk about next, which is the new version of macOS. And no, I have no clue what the name is going to be. I don't have any guesses, so don't ask. This one's pretty simple. I have two things. One of them is just focus on stability. Ventura is all right but it's been interesting. I've had some things here and there that have happened where I've never experienced it on other systems. I had one where I paired up a Bluetooth keyboard and it just decided that for some reason, all of the keys were just the J key. I've never had that happen on a Mac before. And fortunately all I had to do was unpair and repair the keyboard, but it was a very, very odd bug that I have never seen before. So stability and just some bug fixes and you'll have yourself a solid operating system. And then of course, the biggest one that you introduced with Ace Ventura, and I hope that you get rid of. Kill the new system preferences and give us what we used to have. That is my second thing on the wish list. And really it can be the only thing on the wish list because I expect stability and improvements to performance on most operating system updates. But if I were to say the thing that I want the most, Give us the old system preferences back. This new one is garbage. Like, I get that you're trying to give the aesthetic of the iPad system preferences or something along those lines, but you know why the iPad interface for system preferences works on the iPad and not on the Mac? It's because the iPad is a much more restricted system as we've already talked about. So when you put it onto a Mac where you can do things as in-depth as network file sharing, proxy changes for your network, full adjustments to display settings and calibration, all of those things, suddenly it doesn't work as well because 24 options on the iPad versus 100 layered options in macOS, that makes a massive mess. That's why you had a great interface before where everything was laid out and categorized and you could search for it at the top or just find it by the icons. That's why that worked. This doesn't work, the old one did. Go back to this, burn that in a fire. Please, take it away, go away. I don't want it anymore, get rid of it. Whew. All right, so that is literally everything that I personally have any sort of stake in. That's all I really care about with WWDC. But there are two more things that I've seen floating around, technically three, but two big things and then one that I could care less about. The one I could care less about is tvOS. The number of times I actually cared about most of the features in tvOS, I could probably count on one hand, and it's actually one finger. It was when they added eARC, which meant that you could use your Apple TV as a hub for two HomePod speakers 
so that you could play audio through them from any source going into the television. That was the only time I cared about an update for tvOS. They could literally do anything else, and as long as it didn't punch me in the balls, I think they made themselves a pretty solid tvOS, because I turn it on, I pick an app, and I watch anime. Clearly. So, they can do whatever they want with tvOS, as long as it doesn't punch me in the balls. So the two things that I kind of am interested in, or at least have been hearing a lot about, and I'm curious to see what actually happens, are the AR VR setup and the new Mac Pro. Frankly, if Apple introduces an AR VR setup, especially if it's the one that's been rumored now for like three years and has only just now been a it's coming out soon rumor, if they do anything like that, it's probably gonna be really impressive, but it's also probably going to be very expensive. So. My guess is that if they do introduce something, it will be more along the lines of something like what we saw with the Oculus Pro or whatever it was called, or the Meta Pro, that weird thing that lets you see through it and augment what you're seeing on the main screens. And then it's probably gonna be like two grand, maybe three. Uh, so we'll see. I've seen the images and if it looks this good, then cool. Um, if it doesn't, then whatever. My big hope is that at some point we have frames like this and we'll actually have something that augments the reality around you more realistically so that you can see directions on the road, things like that, or look at a building and see the information about the business inside. I think that would be really cool. I am a huge proponent of AR, but at the moment I'm really not holding out too many hopes for this because even when Apple holds off and makes it the, the Apple way, it's still a first-gen product, whether Apple makes it years after everybody else has been doing it or whether it's the first thing that Apple ever made that nobody else has done, it's always first-gen. So probably going to be a while before I actually invest in that. Next up is the Mac Pro. There might be a Mac Pro. <laughs> I really don't know. And if there is, it's probably going to be some variation of a more powerful version of the Mac Studio with ideally some upgradable components. I'm not sure how they're gonna deal with that with RAM, considering that the RAM on the newer Macs with the Apple Silicon system is integrated, and it's actually taking advantage of integrating the RAM instead of just soldering it down for the sake of soldering it down. You get genuine benefits from the integrated RAM on these newer Macs that you didn't get before with standard DIMMs just soldered to the board. So if they do upgradable memory, I'll be curious how they will justify that or potentially get around the speed differences between socketed RAM and soldered down RAM directly integrated onto the chipset. Also, I'll be curious how they will integrate graphics because graphics and being able to change said graphics cards has always been a big thing for the Mac Pros. So maybe if they do that and they actually allow you to change graphics cards, we might see eGPU support coming around to the Macs that don't have upgradable graphics. That'd be kind of cool. I could potentially feel like I didn't waste all this money buying this. Ooh, yeah, I'm one of like 12 people who bought this monstrosity. Um, this is a $250 graphics card packed in about 12 pounds of aluminum and has a little hub on the back. I did a whole video, you can check it out over there. I bought it, you shouldn't, but either way, maybe we'll get this if Apple decides to add upgradable graphics and RAM into the Mac Pro. But. I'm not holding out hope. I also am guessing that it's probably still gonna be like five grand because it's gonna be a no holds barred kind of thing where they just throw everything at the wall with this Mac Pro and say, if you're a pro and you need this, here you go. You're probably working for a studio that doesn't care about the price anyway. And if you're not a pro, don't buy it, get a Mac Studio. And I did a whole video about why you should get a Mac Studio and even why you could get one now in 2023, even though it's almost a year old, actually a little over a year old. Check it out over there. Either way, we have quite a few weeks left until WWDC actually hits, and when it does, I will be covering all of those. So if you are interested in any of that coverage or anything else that I have to say in terms of my opinion for tech, or you just wanna see some good reviews, or you just wanna hang out on Friday for Funny Friday, which is happening tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave some comments down below. What are you all looking forward to at WWDC this year? Is there anything on your wish list? And of course, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there, and have a good one.